summer, under a different name, we do some Cotswold. Um, but Molly is starting to dominate our year. We're doing more and more Molly. Because we're on the edge of the pens, we've always regarded Molly as being sort of part of our world. And we've always done Molly, but we used to do Molly. Um, we used to do the collective dances, one practice, go out and dance from a Wizardsy store bear and found one and that's it. And there are still quite a few teams around our way that do that. So they do Molly and they do it just at that time of year. About ten years ago we decided we wanted to, wanted to work on our Molly and we gave it more time and now as I say it's our Molly season is at least six months of the year now, the winter months mainly. Um, when we started out developing our Molly, we had we didn't know exactly what we were going to do with it, but we, I, I suppose we knew what we weren't going to do with it. Um, I think um, Roy mentioned yesterday that, one of, that there are teams who create an image of um, a tradition or a, a, um, a type of Morris, and there's no doubt that in the last 25 years, some chaps have created Molly. What they did, have done with Molly is wonderful, but it's not what we wanted to do with it. It's partly realism, that if you're going to be a Molly for only part of the year, you are not going to achieve the degree of um, precision which champs have got and which other teams like Billy's Washes um, and uh, Gog and Gog locally um, are working on. The slow, precise military style wasn't for us, so we, we took an op opposite approach. And um, what we've done, what I want to do in the, in the workshop, is look up what we make of Molly. One of the big advantages of something like Molly is that nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Because uh, there is so little um, of <coughs> definitive use in what is written about the tradition <coughs> that uh, you can put one price. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with one of the um, eight collected dances from Combaton and Girton. The dances were collected in the early part of the 20th century. Molly was last seen live in 1934, before the revival in the mid-70s. Um, and um, I'm going to take one of those dances initially. We'll dance that dance. Um, there are various ways of dancing, and we'll dance it anyway. And then we'll look at, at what um, Pig Dyke's done with that dance as a way of seeing how we what our view of Molly is. I think that with something like Molly, there's always a question about what makes it Molly? Um, what do we see as the defining features? And I mean, Roy's talk last night said um, flippantly, well, um, when you haven't got any sticks at all, then you call it Molly. And that's actually a starting point. Uh, as far as I know, there are no Molly teams who use sticks. Um, there aren't many other starting points. Mostly Molly doesn't use bells. Mostly it, it uses disguise, blackface, or in our case, white and black faces. Um, but finding the rules is interesting, and in a sense what you have to do is make your own rules. So this isn't the right way at all, it's just what we've done with it, what, what our view of it has been. So you need sets of six initially.
Um, and one of the things we decided when we were identifying what we meant by Molly was we follow a country dance pattern. That's not the, the approach that's been used by everybody, but that means most of our Molly is a sequence of figures repeated. Now, there's an issue about the repeat that we'll look at in a minute and repeat it again. So just like a country dance, you do a sequence and then there's a progression or whatever, and you do it again, and you do it again. So for us, just as a rule to guide us, we've said that's one of the characteristics for us of our Molly, and we try to derive what we do from country dance figures. Most of the um, six of those eight collected dances have, to a greater or less extent, um, two out of the three figures that are repeated, more or less identical, which is a lead down from a top couple, crack it down, walk down and up ever and back, and a swing, which is a swing and change. And what mainly changes is the first um, figure of the sequence. Um, we might look at one of those later. This is the odd one out. This is the only um, one of the collective dances which was not done as a country dance as well. The other seven were. This was called the special. Um, it's not incredibly complicated. Um, it involves steps, first of all. Um, you are not trying to achieve in this any sort of height or any sort of uh, enthusiasm. It's just a, a double step. Just a straight double step changing. Can they can country gaps or whatever, but nothing fancy anywhere around. Right, that'll do that's your practice. <laughs> Jogging on the spot. Right, if Helen and I do a quick uh, demo first at the top. You are going to do a sequence of four steps and you are going to do um, a triangle. The first step, uh, we start on the right, is on the spot, and then you're going to walk, then you're going to dance a triangle. We'll walk it first. So the first one's on the spot, the second one's diagonally forward, the third one is straight across, and the fourth one is back to place. And then we're going to cross over with a sequence of four again. One into line, one on the spot one to cross and one to turn, and then we're going to repeat the whole thing. So we'll just dance that and then we can dance it.
sort of getting their wish right. You've learned a third of the dance. We do that three times. So the second bit. Um, the second and third couple, or if you're in a set with um, more than six people, the second, third and fourth, um, face up and hold their handkerchiefs high. The top couple, you are going to go down underneath the arches. Okay, you've got two steps to progress. The others move up as they go down. When you reach the top of the set, you go under. When you reach the bottom, you come up and raise your flags. And we should go through a complete sequence and then top couple under again. So it's four times. It gives you two steps to go each time. And that's your progression. You've got two steps to get down for each couple that goes down. Okay, come back if you did walk it and let's dance triangles followed by the lead down. Uh, two ways B. Okay, are we ready? We'll start with the triangles on the spot. On the spot first. 
touch with us. Having said it is, it is different, um, but it still contains basically a leak down to the swing, just like most of the other Molly dances, which are straight and very simple country dances. Put your handkerchiefs away and get in sets of eight, please. <laughs>
do one on the spot because we're heading to the right on this occasion. But you're going beyond your partner. Walk it, go, first step. Now come on a back to back, straight across. And uh, your next step brings you back to place. And we'll do the one on the spot now. We're moving off on the left for the next sequence, so we'll do another one on the spot before we go into it. Then we're going to go into the, to the left, back to back, back to your place. Now that's a complete sequence of eight steps. We're now going to repeat it, and we're going straight into it because we're going to the right first. Okay, off you go, to the right, and walk it again. To the right, straight across, back to place, on the spot, on the spot, diagonally left, back to back, and back to place. So, the whole sequence is forward, diagonally right, back to back, straight across, um, parallel with your partner, on a left, back to place, on a, um, diagonally on the right, one on the spot. Another one on the spot. So there are two steps on the spot in the middle of the sequence, but they run across the music. And then repeat it on the left. So forward diagonally left, back to back, back to place. And then you're going to repeat the whole thing, which means you go straight in for the second half. Having got back to place with your left step, left foot, you're going to go straight out diagonally to the right with the, with the right foot. Okay, is that clear and clear? Let's take it bit by bit. So we will uh, dance the first bit, we won't do the repeat, so you're going to do right back to back, two on the spot, left back to back. Wait. 
change. Okay, we, the third, the third um, bit of the special was a swing. Our swings, we've got a number of different swings we've tried. We've tried to pick inspiration from country dance um, swings. This one isn't particularly, but it sort of feels nice, so we live with it. So we do do, uh, for instance, a, a strip the willow as a swing occasionally. We do uh, right arm swings, we do two handed swings. This is a single handed swing. Um, <coughs> starting on the right, if I don't know, I do. And it's a single handed swing with the reverse. Is it the beat? No, but it's something else, but I can't. Get into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <cont> here. <laughs>
and left shoulder tip you're going left. Let's walk it after three. One, two, three.
going to do the whole thing again. Are we ready to go to the zigzag? Short intro, then the zigzag. Back to place and then keep going and do it again. Interesting bits is making sure that um, 
number uh, seven had six, don't cut off number eight as they come down. Because <laughs> she's still coming down the set. You are going to do two steps just to go right round and back to place. Now drop hands and pick up right with your partner. Right swing with your partner. And now do it again, left for two. And now right for two. Okay? Let's all walk that. So look diagonally left, number one and eight are out of it. Two steps, swing. Back to place. Drop hands, right hand with your partner for two. Now do it again, left for two. And right for two. Okay, let's try. Let's try the. Um, let's just try that swing first, then we'll try the lead down and swing. <laughs> Probably left if it makes sense at the time. 
And the back-to-back -back is going to happen between these people, and these are just going to mirror them. OK, that's it. This set. <laughs>
just now put the last wing in. Okay, triangle up and down and change in half.
of number eight and disappears. Number eight gets to position number one and disappears. And other people then follow them. Except the last two just keep swinging right in the middle of the set. So the end of the music. Let's try it again to swing off.
in for right left. Then it's double lead down, two steps each time, working with your partner. Then it's swing right, four steps, right hand swing, four steps, left hand swing, all with your partner. Then it's zigzag. Um, it's single lead down, one, two, three, four, moving each bar. And then it's swing left, which is looking diagonally left and initially missing out one and eight. So left for two steps, right with your partner for two steps and repeat. Then it's triangles up and down, uh, second couple paces up, third couple paces down. Um, then it's change halfway through and uh, middle space one another. Then it's change and a half, that's top couples cast out, bottom couples cast up, two steps, back to place and then you'll just join them. And it's swing off, right, left, right, left. Okay, let's go through. The dance is called, for uh, obscure reasons, Ethel's Cats.
actually get them to do what you want to do and enjoy it and at the end of the day say, well, that's good. You know, I'll do that again. You know, I'll come do it again. So you've really got to think about that. At the same time, you've got to achieve some sort of result at the end of it. Um, and there's not, one of the things that we do try and teach is everybody does a jig in design. And unfortunately, that usually ends up because everybody's the same jig. Um, and it turns out over the years, it's the jig we actually tend to throw out all the time. Now, jigs are wonderfully valuable. I don't know if people have been foreman, or if you're not just because there probably is my proportion of being here have actually edged their side one way or another, foreman, squire. You only get about 30 to 40 hours a year of practice before you perform. You get an hour, an hour and a half, perhaps two hours if you manage to actually, nobody gets two hours. If you start at eight, finish at ten, you don't do two hours of practice. So you've got to give people some, some excuse to practice somewhere else. So either they do more than one practice a week, which is, you know, quite high. It used to be. I used to do it before. Not the same. But it's not common now, and you can't sustain that. You just give me a commitment for an amateur. Um, or you've got to try and find something that they'll practice at home. <coughs> something that has jigs of all the steps. You usually have a background for most of the figure. So if you teach jigs, you can say, well, go and dance for a jig at home. Um, if you haven't got music, just now, I'm not a musician, I can. So I'm afraid last night's film was completely lost on me. And when the music didn't fit, I carried on. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had every expectation, because I had the great question, but very fortunately, just the musicians would catch up in the end. <laughs> <laughs> they would work out why we weren't fitting and actually make up for it. And very, very seldom. So, great question, we're very fortunate to say we have very, they get very much neglected.
know, and these are all those steps you need to know for Banton, is the side step and a half caper. And the capers. Unfortunately, we don't do capers in this class. So we do. The capers are fairly easy to do. Oh, I can't bend down to really have to do it. Side steps. Side step sequence. Yes. 
should only do one single side step, two, double, two single steps, one side step, two single steps. Just go back. It's one side step, two single steps. <laughs>
divide into fours going down. And you do you do your small circles in that direction in clockwise direction. So these fours in the clockwise direction. Roughly in four, do Thank you. 
up. We're going to do it in four pairs. Right? These two are going to completely fortuitously, they're dancing opposite each other. Because right? normally there wouldn't be anybody here, there'd be an audience. And if we were dancing this out, we most probably would have turned the sets around so you'd be facing out to the audience. But no, we're actually facing each other. And this allows you the two the, the circle to be married. If you're leaning off here, you'll actually tag on behind and do your eight. Oh, eight. 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 We're doing slows, and so they turn out to be eight. Really. And so there's eight half eights.
say before when he's in a funeral. Um, or poor man will have this totally clear idea of what they want the side to do. And they have this clear perspective, or they put it sorted out in their mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're still as a side, and for anybody who knows us, that is an impossible task. You have, we have at least uh, eight previous women, all of them who the classic the side. They're all dancing at the side there. Um, Princess Royal Field uh, banter and that jig is always taught by the foreman. You know, you'll teach it. And so there are at least eight styles of doing princess. And you can tell the side side somebody joined the side, unless they are two of you, like you, you can be managed to win both of them. You can tell when they join the side by the way they do it. But it doesn't really matter because they're out there and I'm, Now, Jig's a great performer because of the size and that again, but that people. Um, alternatively, alternatively, if you're really stuck, you ask the audience to join and you'll have to take the next one. Um, so that's that gives you a really long breather. Um, or if you're actually on Morris tours, it just causes for one long argument so you can't start to depart. So, um, so we'll do it again. There is this variation, of course, that after Mark will get bored of it and say dancing. So, Ray Weston has this, is introduced the leap of finish. <laughs> and so there's a leap that comes at the end. Now, the traditional finish to the double jigs, everybody will wear it, the two people join in at the end and repeat the final cycle. I'm not everyone jumping on me. <laughs> no, there's no need. But so, if you've got two of you, you can do that leap frog. The interesting thing is, it's, it's the, well, not interesting really at all, it's the way it works for us is that the, Back row, that means the second to do the first leap frog. So you wait till the end of the side step chorus. I think. Yes, you're hiding. Okay, here he is. I'll try and demonstrate this little leap frog sequence. And you can try leap frogging over me. We won't get it right, but they'll give you a rough idea of how it should go. Because the, the leap frog, I'm in front of the first verse, and I'm doing that.
thing, radically, what, significant at the end, people then concentrate on that piece and then forget what comes next. Because we were going to do the chorus three times. Because traditionally you end the cipher two consists at the end. Okay, um, I've got about another 40 minutes and I thought that... Uh,
to the 15th. At the moment, we've got 10 in our head, and we knew we were doing a repeat of that all the way. The, first, the, the, fifth, the next five is a repeat of the first five. What one, means? Two, one. So it's one, one, two. No. no. One, one, two, one.
have all the set up. You actually have to reform that bond between you. And it's very much the same as it is for individual Morris groups. People say, oh, you know, and I, uh, people who dance in many sides, get, get, or a different number of different groups, they get this rather chameleon like uh, view. Is they actually change their, not say change, totally change their personality, but they get absorbed back into the group when they move to a different place. And so if they haven't got that quite a quality, if they always feel on the outside. And it's because you're a really, I fit in with this particular group. Okay, the, the, the figures are in it. You'll have to quite all the better than The first figure is that quite easy to learn. I also talk about the steps, didn't we? I went to the bed of the workshop last summer, and the only thing they taught us was the step. Um, they didn't teach us anything else. I feel bitter about that. <laughs> and I, I feel bitter about it because Mr. Kirkpatrick stands at the front and says, you know, well, you know, make up your own thing. I can, I can do tunes. I can do figures. You make it up. And that's just not fair. <laughs> it's not fair because in any side, there are only two or three who can change it. Um, if you go and say, who are you going to make up a dance? Uh, two or three people will have an idea and they'll throw them in. And other people will chip in, but it's usually brought to you by one or two people. And so you can't have hundreds, uh, you can, it's in, it's in but you can you have hundreds of people throwing in because you can't sustain that. So if you're, you can't expect people to go away and be as creative as you if you are that one. They're just not there. So you have to give it out. If you don't want to, <coughs> they're not. You know, so, so you can't find all this. Um, so the red one step is very easy to cover this. Year. It's a very simple step. We'll do it in circles. You've got your own table. It's a one pop.
with a stamp, stamp. And it's one of the two. Before you search past. So you sorry.
And the good thing is, you race the music on the first bit, and then you go too slow on the long crashes, because you're really worried you're going to hit something. So, so you're doing nice, constant pace. Okay, that's the first figure. The second figure, the second figure is a work easy figure called Long. All you have to do is imagine you're on motorbikes. This is where the, this is where the name comes from, and you're doing two figures of eight, a figure of eight, two small circles going into a figure of eight change. Um, um, with this set here, I'll just talk about it. You're the two leads. Everybody else faces up and follows them. You cast out, and you're going to make a very small circle. So try to catch up with the end person. Small circle. So, you, oh, it's not that moment. You should all be in two small circles at a time. So you're going to cross over. You cross over in that direction. So you cross over in that direction. So you can follow that. Until you, the two leaders come up to the end. It's just like a formation. And then you have this decision you've already made who's going to go front. You actually form that in a single line at the middle of the set. Single line in the middle of the set. Single line at the end. I wish I'd seen Bedlam's ever do this dance. But anyway, that's where they are. Then you actually, this is all the same sequence of music, you turn onto your wrong side, you do a small turn to go to your other side of the set. Turn, do a small turn, face back, and that's the time to do your two stamps and your three stamps. Because then you do not again on the same again, same sequence again, but you cross back. Right.
face each other. The top, the top, the top, face each other. And you move into the middle of the set. Because you're actually going to do stick mashing going down the set. At the same time, the bottom six. All in your individual, you do a single guitar out, and you all then just move up to the six to the top of the set. You move in the same formation, so you stay in the same order. And by this time, the bottom pairs have got to the bottom. The stick clashing, it's a. Uh,